This meeting is being Hi everybody. Welcome to Serenity Cards and Coaching. This is the launch of my Simply Stamping class. And it's a bit of an evolution from what we've been doing the second Wednesdays anyway. Super excited to share today's class with you. We've got four projects. We've got four, uh, three cards and a little treat container that's super cute and super excited to show them all to you. So this will be card number one. I don't know if you see that little hint of purple shiny paper there, but we've got card number one. We've got card number two, and it's a fun fold that I invented, actually. Super excited to show that to you. We've got card number three, and it's a bookmark. There's a lot of people that have been doing bookmarks out there these days, and so um, kind of modified that. And we've got a fun little treat container uh, using that shimmer paper again. So I don't know that that's exactly the order I'm going to do, but those are the cards we're going to go over today. And you can find more information tomorrow. So today's Wednesday. You can find more information tomorrow at lilamikey.com. And let's go ahead and get to the making. So, um, so a, a little minute about what this second, second Wednesday is going to be now. The second Wednesday is, is going to be kind of similar to what it's been. It's a free class. You come and you get to watch me make a number of projects and I'll give the instructions and the directions uh, kind of verbally. And then, and then I always launch um, an ordering special. So you can, this is a kit that you can either purchase or you can get it for free with an ordering special. So, um, but let's just get to the making and let me show you how. So in your kit, you would get two envelopes and you would get ingredients to kind of decorate the envelope a little bit and you would get ingredients for all of the cards. And let me show you what the ingredients are going to be. You're going to have your card base, which is just a thick basic white. I always do my card bases in a thick basic white um, or a color, but I always do a thick cardstock is what I want to say. And then you're going to get some ribbon. You're going to get designer series paper cut to size. Now, who recognizes what these edges are? If you're on mute, you can come off mute. Who might recognize what these edges are? Can anybody tell what these are? The deckled edge. These are the deckled dies. Exactly right. So today I'm going to be using the deckled dies and um, as I go through it, I'll let you know the sizes. I've ended up using four main sizes. These guys are great for the sentiments. Now, our dies don't come on this magnet sheet. I just use that for my convenience. And actually, when I'm storing it, I store it like this for efficiency sake. But we're going to be using four main ones. And I just love a deckled look, and it looks great with this paper. So you're going to see that throughout um and a similar stamp set throughout and i'll be introducing that as we go along so i'm going to take this first one and put it off to the side because we're only going to make one now in the kit i said that my kits will have um a, you know approximately six projects right and so it'll be two each of each card type and then one or two if we do a little treat or a something a little extra special. So I'm just going to do the envelope and get it out of the way. I won't do all the envelopes um, every time uh, for all the cards today, but I want to show you a little secret for how I do the envelope. So, and by the way, this designer series paper is you can get it free if you don't have it already. You can get it free during celebration. So from now till the end of February. You can get this paper free with a minimum $50 order. And it's lovely. It's six, uh, no, I think it's 12 sheets of designer series paper, all different designs. And we're going to be using a few of them today. So what I've done is I've cut this to six by two and a half. And I'm going to show you how I very simply decorate the back panel of the envelope. So the envelope closes this way, right, of course. But when I'm going to put the paper on it, and I'm going to put the, um, well, you know what? We have one with the flowers. Why don't I put one with the watercolor? So I'm going to put one where you're going to have the watercolor side displayed. This is how I do it. I tuck it into the little edge, 
the openings over here, right? So I, I bump it right up against the edge. I use glue if you um, choose to use tape. I don't know, I especially like glue for um, purposes such as this when it's going through the mail and it needs to be really, really robust and needs to go all the way to the edges. But I put the glue on, and again, this was six by two and a half. I snug that in, just really, really good and snug. I give it a good burnish and then I snip around it. And then I know that I've lined it up correctly. I know it's just snug right in the corner. Uh, I know it's exactly what I need. And so you're gonna get in this kit, you're gonna get ingredients for um, all the envelopes uh, and you would, you would do them all just identically the same. And then I'm just gonna take my snips and I'm gonna go around the edge I felt myself cut into the envelope a little bit because I'm going a little bit quickly. That'll be fine. It'll just seal just fine. I like to round the edges and there you have it. There you have your decorated envelope. So super simple, Simon. That was that guy. And now let's get to the making of the card. So what I've done for the card, I've done a deco edge on all three sizes. And I've done it, and as a reminder, that little purple guy just is just the tiniest little hint in the corner. This is, um, I got a sketch card, I mean, I got a um, swap card that had like that little treatment, and I loved it. So I went ahead and just kind of copied that. So, um, so these sizes, by the way, now I've labeled mine A, B, etc. not necessarily in order, but um, I took kind of the largest one and then the next one down. So if you're, if you have them, it's the one that's kind of three and three quarter inches wide. And then the next one in is about three and a half inch wide. And then I took the little tiny kind of sentiment one right there. So those are the deco sizes. And if you don't have them, I really want to invite you to consider getting them because they're pretty amazing. All right, I'm going to put all this off to the side. And the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp in the corner. Now, I love the sentiment. I ended up getting this entire bundle, the stamps and the um, dies. I ended up getting it just because I love that sentiment. The best is yet to come. I just love it. So we're going to go ahead and stamp that today. Um, and I'm going to stamp it right on the designer series paper. Now, if you get the kit, you can see you're going to like get different um, different views of the flowers because that's just the way the paper plays out, right? So um, so because of that, you're going to put your sentiment maybe a little bit um, different placement. And I hope to goodness it's straight. Here's my trick for doing a straight sentiment. I line it up on the block so that it's about as straight on the block as it can be. And sometimes I'll practice it off to the side just to kind of test it. And then when I'm putting it here, I'll just make sure my block is straight. And I'm going to put this guy kind of in the middle. And I'm just going to hope for the best here. Sometimes, oh my goodness, yay! Sometimes they come out crooked. And if that's the case, that's a great opportunity for creativity, popping on a little circle or a little embellishment or a little something. So your kits will come with ribbon. And this particular one is the white crinkled seam binding. And I've also, I'm featuring a couple different ribbons in this project. I do have enough on this spool for two cards. So you wanna make sure that you dole it out, either cut it in half or maybe you're a bow person or maybe you even wanna put some twine or something else like just, um, just I have enough for two so just make sure when you're doing it you dole it out and um when I I just flat out give two feet per card <laughs> like that's just what I do it's pretty generous actually we don't need two feet per card but I um you can tell right now like I need a lot of room to make a bow and so I like a generous amount so I give you guys a generous amount so there will be four feet there so now I've got my really, really big bow. I don't want him that big. So I'm just gonna kind of fussy cut like that. I'm gonna come in and cut off my little tails and that's it. Now I tied him around this one. I didn't tie him around the blue one. You can, um, you can do whatever you want there. And I am gonna use a little mini blue dot. 
because I, um, oh gosh, I moved some things. I'm gonna use a little mini glue dot because I like the ribbon to just be nice and secure. So I'm gonna come under here and I just put it right under the knot and I make sure it's nice and secure. Now, my ribbon ended up being a little twisty turny. I actually, I, that is actually similar to my personality actually. I'm not perfectly like ducks lined up, but you can take some time to make sure it's not twisty turny if you want. For today, I'm just gonna leave it a little whimsical. Um, all right, so that's that guy. And then the purple glimmer. Now, do you guys know, I don't know if you know this paper, it's scrumptious. There's a purple, there's a um, like a mint macaron. We'll see that again too when we do this guy. Um, and then there's a gold. I'm not featuring the gold today. This comes in 12 by 12 size and it's just scrumptious, you guys. It's just really, really sweet. So I'm putting this on the left side and um, you think that you need to show a lot, but you don't. So I'm just going to put it with just the littlest bit. Like it was such a delight when I was looking at the swap card, I'm like, oh gosh, that really just brings out the, the purple and the flowers and the lilacs. And then when I studied a little bit closer, I'm like, well, no wonder just that little pop of purple right there. So you just like, it almost feels a shame to waste it. And yet you just want that little, little touch. So, uh, so I've got that. Now I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to adhere this to the, oh gosh, what color is this? He's, I always get the orchid and the starry sky confused. This guy's starry sky. So I'm going to adhere him to the starry sky designer series paper. And that's why you wanted just the little tiniest, like you don't, I didn't want it going over the edge. I just wanted the little hint right there. So we go ahead and get that lined up. This was also Starry Sky ink. And the stamps that I used were the Dainty Delight stamps. Um, just really, really sweet. And so now, I put it on at an angle. The whole thing is just a little bit of whimsy. So I put it on at an angle. So I'm gonna get, go ahead and give one more glue. And that's gonna be our card number one. Now again, if you choose to purchase the class, I do the class online here free, and then you can buy the kit. I also do the class in person. If you choose to purchase it, it's $20 for the kit and you get two cards, but really, why wouldn't you get it for free? And you just place a minimum order of $25 or more and you get the kit for free. So you guys, that is our card. Oh, wait, there's one little more thing. This is lots of Wink of Stella today. So um, here you can see that was a little bit different designer series paper and you probably see the bling happening, right? I added a little bit of bling. So here, I don't know, I'm just gonna bling the purple because I really want that to pop. I'm just going to bling everywhere actually. And then I gave some gems, but I didn't see them pop out of the little envelope. I'm only doing the flowers. I'm not doing the leaves, although you could, and I'm just doing the lightest touch. So I gave a few little gems from here uh from this this is an in color pack and um it doesn't exactly i mean these are the in colors it doesn't exactly match per se um but i just i really thought it was just a nice pastel touch you know what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna be a little whimsical and i'm just gonna put i mean you're gonna go with whatever dots i gave you or whatever collection you have in hand but because i um because I just have them sitting in front of me. I'm just gonna pop just three little yellow dots right there. If I was really alone, I'll be honest with you, I probably would do that whole thing in all the yellows. But anyway, we'll just leave it right there like that. Just a little trio, just a little touch. On this guy, I put a yellow in the middle and a pink and a, I don't know, a freesia right there. And so just a little bit of bling. So you guys, that is our card number one 
with decorated envelopes. So there we have it. Alrighty, we will move on. Ooh, ah, I know you guys are on mute. So we will move on to card number two. All right, card number two. This is the fun fold I created and it's really fun. So at first I thought this paper was a little bit dark. Um, and I love how I just, I kind of took the scripty celebrate you and stamped it a little bit off the side to just bring a little bit of gentleness to it. And then the sentiment, of course, just a little bit of like, just kind of off. I love the combination actually of the dainty stamps and maybe the heavier paper because it just kind of gives a balance. Now, this stamp set isn't actually the one that's intended to pair with this paper. There is a stamp set that pairs with this paper. And I played with quite a few different, I played with Happiness of Bounds, I played with a few different roses, and I ended up really liking this combination the best. So I'm gonna go ahead and share this card with you. And so, again, in your kit, you would have the makings for the envelopes, we're not going to do that. It's the same technique I showed you. Makings for two cards, and they're cut a different way. And then let me just get all the little pieces out. So you have all the pieces times two, but we're just going to do it times one. There's the little gems. Now I'm going to um, give you some extra little die cuts in there. I do that. You'll find that in my kits. I just I mean, I have to cut apart the paper anyway, so I'm just gonna throw in some extra little bit of DSP, but really the one that we're using is this guy. So I'll make sure you have one for each card, but um, I'm perfectly fine if you take this one and use it instead, or, you know, I, I love it when people bring their creativity to it. You don't have to, you can follow along exactly step-by-step, step, um, but I love it when you bring your creativity. And the other thing I'll say about my class, my kit is when you get it to go, I'm very aware that you may or may not have exactly the same supplies. And so um, I try to have things work across different um, stamp sets. So this would work great with the stamp set that it comes with. Um, I mean, that, that pairs with it. It's a big, thick, bold, uh, really beautiful stamp set. But I also think it works well with dainty. And that dainty, of course, was dainty paper too. So. I fussy cut my rose. Um, you can go in as close as you want, but I fussy cut my rose. And then the pieces that we have to work with, we've got the organdy glimmer ribbon. We've got a piece of fresh freesia. And here's my note, we're gonna stamp it and then we're gonna cut it. Um, so just, you'll see what I mean by that. But we're doing a card base that's four and a quarter by 11 scored at five and a half. So we're gonna go the long way. Um, and then we've got a few other pieces just following along with our decal here. I've got the large in Blackberry Bliss. So that's the one that's about three and three quarter wide. I've got the beautiful Roses Designer Series paper. That's about three and a half inch wide and they fold together nicely. I've got the sentiment that's the smallest sentiment. It's about an inch wide. And then I use the same for the inside. So, um, so those are all the pieces that I think we need. And I'm going to show you how I did the the cutting and the um, the scoring. So we're going to use Blackberry Bliss. Now, here's one thing that I love, 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 love about Stampin' Up. Our colors match. So I know if I've got Blackberry Bliss in the paper, if I've got Blackberry Bliss here, and if I've got Blackberry Bliss ink, they're all gonna match across the board. I love, love, love that. So I've got my Blackberry Bliss ink pad. I also played, by the way, let's say you don't have Blackberry Bliss and you're trying to repeat this at home. I played with um, Rich Razzleberry and that one works okay too. Now I'm gonna be, cutting like you're only going to see just the tiniest edge so i'm just kind of stamping all along the edge and i'm mixing it up 
in terms of what letters show where um, so that there's just a nice little variety of text. Now, you guys, I don't know if you guys, I've told some of you, I haven't told everybody, I'm taking an art class right now, and it's literally an art class. So it's, um, it's not a stamping class. And one thing that I've learned already about my particular style, I love text. I love text as an artistic element. And so I thought, you know what, I'm going to start playing with that a little bit more. So I also want to go across the top. So I'm using, now we have masking paper. I didn't bring mine over. I'm using um, some sticky notes and I'm lining it against the score line so that um, the back is pretty clean. But I just, I want to go across the top as well so that we just have that covered. So now that, now we stamp first, then we cut. So what's the cut? The cut is really, really simple. Let me get my trimmer and it's simple, but impactful. So all we did was we cut one quarter inch but we stopped right there. So I didn't cut on the back. So in order to do that, I'm gonna take my trimmer and I'm gonna put this, so each one of these marks is quarter inch. Each one of these marks, so one quarter, one half, three quarters, one. So I'm gonna move over to the one quarter inch. I'm gonna do that. And I know I wanna come five and a half down because that's the size of the paper. It's five and a half down. And I have a grid line over here on my uh, ruler. And so if you can see it, I don't want to cut my paper, I'll show you. I'm going to actually start my blade at the five and a half inch mark. So you see how there's like a little line right there. And then there's a little line right there. That's five and a half. I'm going to start it and then I'm going to go up. So, and let me give you a hint. If you want to come from the bottom, I'm just going to tell you right now, and I learned it the hard way, the bottom goes to 12 and a half. Oh my goodness, I didn't realize that. I thought it ended at a solid inch. So I kept cutting up and I kept being off by half an inch. It was driving me crazy. Anyway, so now I only go from the top. But we're gonna go quarter inch mark and five and a half. And I'm just gonna go straight up. So now I've got my little strip. That's it. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And in order to enjoy the benefit of being able to follow that same pattern and not have to come up from the bottom and get confused, I'm just going to do it from the back. A cut is a cut, right? So it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to do it from the back. So I'm going to get to five and a half inches. I'm going to make sure he's on a quarter. I'm going to come up. And there we go. So that's it. So now I'm going to glue these two down and then it's so funny because I was sitting here making it and I was like, well, I really want it to be a flap. And then that's how ideas happen. I'm like, well, then I'm just going to make it a flap and it's not going to be a flap with a very wide edge. So then it needed to be kind of delicate. So anyway, that's kind of how that all unfolded. So, um, so I'm still learning like how to give kits to you guys. So in some cases, like I will do the die cutting for you. I don't think I'm going to do this um, cutting for you. And I'll tell you why you definitely want to stamp before you cut. So if you have any questions, you can come to a stamp with Leela. You can just contact me. I'm happy to share um, if you have any questions at all. But so some of the things I'll do ahead of time for you and some of the things I won't. So now I'm just kind of feeling along the left edge just to make sure that it's nice and lined up. I'm going to come over here and do the same thing. I'm going to put it down and then because it's glue, it's got a little bit of forgiveness. So I'm going to go over there and that's it. Now I can just build the rest of my front. So the rest of my front is 
I'm going to Now in this case, I wrapped the ribbon. Actually, I wrapped the ribbon all the way around the whole thing. So I'll show you that once it's assembled. So I've got my Blackberry Bliss. And I've got my, and I've got my roses facing the right way, face up, right? Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and glue this right there. And I want it in the middle. So I'm gonna make sure it's in the middle. Now, as I'm looking at it, I'm comparing. I did one where I stamped above and below this and one where I didn't. And I'm trying to decide which one I like better. But that's the fun thing about stamping is you get to play with all that and figure it all out. All right. So I've added that. Now I can take my ribbon again, two feet per card. Go ahead and wrap a circle, wrap a wrap it around the edge, and give a little give a little bow. And then I've used the same sentiment, the best is yet to come, and I added the flower on it. But there's also other sentiments. I'll show you those other sentiments. There's a thank you. There's well, the celebrate you we put on the inside. So on the outside, I've got the best is yet to come. And on the inside, I've got celebrate you. And I'll tell you a little story. I debated whether to tell you this story or not, but I'll tell you. I used to, a long time ago, I used to write for a magazine called Rubber Stamp Madness. And I interviewed a woman and she made a necklace and she had her own stamp line. And she had a stamp that said the best is yet to be and um it was something that her grandmother said to her and her grandmother was like quite elderly at that time that she said it and it just really touched me that um that just really really touched me so I, ever since then i've loved this sentiment if i think about it well more likely if i find it i'll bring that necklace out and i'll bring it to um to an, an event maybe so now we're gonna do the best is yet to be again. We're going to do it in Blackberry Bliss. Yeah, that woman, it was kind of cool. She designed her own stamp line and she did a lot of things with fabric. So in this case, I'm stamping the sentiment all the way to the left because I want the room to put the flowers on it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, use dimensionals and the thing I want to tell you about this is you want to make sure you position it so that your rose is like not going outside the envelope so you want to position it like that so I'm going to go ahead and use dimensionals to get this on there you guys do this I kind of cut all around the edges of my dimensionals so I really get good use out of all of them um, so I'm going to go ahead and put my dimensionals there. And then this one just has one little gem. It's got the inside. It's got a little bit of Wink of Stella. And then we're good on this guy. So um, this designer series paper has um, a couple of different colors. This has uh this color and then we're about to see it it's all it's got this and then it's kind of got a combination of those two so we'll get to see the calypso coral in a minute and then honestly the mossy meadow in the back is lovely too so i kind of wanted to leave like that little corner showing down there i'm going to use my wink of stella brush again just get a little bling Really, I'm just kind of doing it on this flower because I really kind of want to just draw the eye to that flower. Um, I'm going to take the gems. I've started to do this. I took a window sheet and I cut it. We, we sell these window sheets and I'm starting to, um, rather than putting the gems in there, well, I guess it's the same net effect. When there's more gems, I'm trying to package better, I guess that's what I want to say. But then when you just have two little ones, there's still just two little ones. Maybe I'll put it in for all of them, but um, 
Oh, I think I didn't get the adhesive off of that. So that's going to go in the middle of the flower. And then we're going to stamp the sentiment in the middle. The best is yet to come. So I could, you know what, there's a gal who's turning a hundred. And if I didn't already have a card for her, um, this could be a card I could give for her, but I already have a card for her. So, oh, I should have put celebrate you. Anyway, there we have it. So there we go. Alrighty, which one do you guys like better so far? They're all on mute. All right, so that is that guy. The best is yet to come. Alrighty, okay. Now let's take a moment and do something different. Let's take a break from making a card and let's make this guy. Um, this is super fun and it's way easier than you would think to make. So let's make this guy. We are going to need, and we're gonna put some candies in there. Let's see how many fit. All right, here's that glimmer paper I was telling you about. Here's two of the colors. Super pretty, comes in 12 by 12. For this one, you need a piece of designer series paper that's four and a half by six. So I'll give you two, and I give you some other ingredients that you need for making the, uh, making the piece. So four and a half by six. Now, the other thing you're gonna need for this is you're gonna need tear and tape. So uh, if you don't have it, it's a great thing to add to your wish list. And what we're going to do is we are going to put tape around three of the edges. And we're going to put it as close to the outside edge as we can. So, and it sticks pretty well. And you want to make sure it's really, really burnished. You want to go ahead and put it all the way around. So if you don't have tear and tape, so the basic adhesives that you want to have, um, of course, there's the tape versus glue debate. So pick your favorite. Is it, do you want to use the runner tape, which is seal or seal plus, or do you want to use glue? And then we all need tear and tape for projects like this, where we want it really, really secure. Dimensionals and mini dimensionals. Now, dimensionals are a set size, and then of course the mini Stampin' and dimensionals are smaller. So if, if you have smaller things you want to do. So that's the regular size. And then the mini is great if you just have tiny little objects you want to pop up. Sometimes I'll just cut a regular dimension. So I don't know if you can see, but I've done it around three of the sides. I did not do the fourth side. And so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to break the fibers of the paper, but we're going to kind of do it gently. So I'm going to go like I'm going to roll it. So you could do this with any designer series paper and you could do this for any event, right? I'm doing it now for Valentine's Day because that's kind of timely, but you could very easily put happy birthday. You could very easily put happy Easter. You could pick any event. So. I'm just very slowly breaking the fibers. I'm making sure that I'm not bending it um, and putting like crease marks in it. I'm just rolling it and I'm kind of, I did it kind of loosely to start and then I'm going to do it a little bit um, more tight as I go on. So that's the first thing. Now we're going to take off, we're going to completely remove this strip. So take the strip off of this end and we're going to partially remove this and we're going to fold that down and we're going to partially remove this and we're going to fold it down. And now we are going to adhere this to the outside of this. And it was occurring to me, it's probably a whole lot easier to do it if you've got um, like a different pattern of paper. But 
I'm going about quarter inch there because that's what the that's the width of the tape and I'm going to go about quarter inch there. And so I think that the one that I did earlier was not as nice quarter inch quarter inch and it worked out fine. Now I'm coming in and where that crease is I'm really burnishing because I really, really want that to be very, very, very secure. And then the next thing I'm going to do, so now I've got my roll and I've got it all secured right there. I'm going to remove one end, not both ends. I'm going to remove one end. And this is very important. Um, I learned this. Oh, I forgot to write her name down, but if you want to know, I will tell you. Um, I learned this from a gal and I kind of like watched it and I'm like, all right, I got it. And then I did it and then I made a little boo boo. So she said, try to have it at the two thirds mark. I just kind of instinctively put the um, seam. I don't know if you can see the seam. I kind of had it halfway, but then it ends up living on the edge. I'll show you um, when I'll show you my mistake. But anyway, so you want to go about two thirds in. So I'm about right there. And then you just want to line up your two seams. I mean, your two edges. And if it's not perfect, that's OK. You can trim it a little bit. But you just want to line up your two edges and then give it a good burnish and i'm only giving it a good burnish about a quarter inch in because that's where the tape is. Um, so i've got that good and burnished and now this is where the really cool magic appears. I was so smitten with this once I learned it so now I'm, I took off the tape from the other end so i'm not going to press it straight here i'm going to rotate it. And then I'm going to, oh, got to put some treats in it. Ha, here's Happy Valentine's Day. Here's your empty container. Ha, so I've got about mm, three. I've got about, let's see. I'm going to just do three. She did Hershey Kisses, but I've got about four. I've got about three nuggets in there. And so now I'm going to go this way. I wonder if there's any size. Um, Reese's that would fit in there because I love Reese's. I guess Reese's pieces might. All right, so now I'm sealing that edge. Ta da! Burnishing it. And then look, I'm, I'm, I, I just thought it was so cool. And look, all right, so that's where the seam is. And it's much better placement for me because I did it halfway um then the seam ended up right there so um do as i say not as i do you know what if you want to learn a mistake i probably am going to figure it out ahead of time of you so all right so that is our cute little container and i think i like this because the seam edge isn't showing and now we can further decorate it so stampin up used to sell a crocodile we don't sell it anymore we used to, I don't think we even sell a hole puncher right now. So, um, so get a hole puncher because it's a very, very basic staple. If we have it, get the one we have. I, I'm not sure if we do or not. Um, but if not, a crocodile is a really useful tool to have. So, um, so then I give you the ribbon and you can just put a little bow there. And then again, I, I'm going to um, stamp out the hearts for you, but you could very easily, um, if you didn't have this heart punch, you could take another heart punch, or you could take a bunny punch, or you could take a flower punch, like you could take anything, it would just be super cute. I think um, she did it with like the, the double ovals, where it was like the scalloped oval and then the little um scalloped oval and then the inner oval so you can do it with so many things but anyway we're going to tie a nice little bow like that this is such a great use for dsp so this designer dsp designer series paper this dsp is also free right now with um 50 dollars purchase and Sometimes we end up with a bit of it, right? It's like, oh, what am I going to do with it? So you can make a card and then you can very easily make an accompanying treat and super simple Simon, right? So inside the container, um, 
I give you, this is just a half inch strip that I kind of cut off the edge of just a piece of basic white. And then um, actually there's a really efficient way that I use the punch so I didn't have to go straight into it. Um, no, I don't have the scrap, but basically I took the piece of paper size about like this. So I didn't have to go like straight in. I could kind of go at an angle and then just get the leaf and then I could keep moving it over. You want to cut it because sometimes it gets all jammed up, but you can just do tiny little strips. You can punch upside down so that um, you're just getting the image that you need. So, and this one's fun because um, it's got a couple different heart shapes. Now this one right now is on back order, but we always need hearts and it's a great one to get. So, um, so here, so I just have my shiny hearts and I've got my leaves and just gonna put, I don't know, just a couple like little wings on these hearts. I've been having fun with this. Um, well, with Valentine's Day, I love Valentine's Day, actually. I don't know if you guys can see behind me. I'll show it to you. Bob made me a, a doll stand for my doll. Oh, you can't. I'll have to show it to you separately. He made me a doll stand for my doll. And she's in a red and white Valentine dress. And she's um, just received a Valentine. And she's really excited about that. So anyway, I'll try to show you at the end after. All right. That was not the best way to do that. So you just want to get these adhered behind like that. Just get a nice little, nice little adhering. And then I'm going to put a dimensional on the back. And I'm going to pop it on your little treat. And then this Happy Valentine's Day sentiment. This one is from the country bouquet now you can get the stamp set right now you just can't get the punch but oh my gosh it's the perfect size i love you with love for you love that we're friends just wanted to say happy valentine's day great font so um that's just a classic classic so then i uh i just stamped it it fits perfectly on a little just half inch strip i just took a piece of basic white and cut a half inch strip I'm going to go ahead and stamp that. Give it a little snip. Oh, you know what? I see there's a color difference. So, um, so that I think I chose to use the uh, Rich Razzleberry. This is Blackberry Bliss, so it just has a little bit more pop. So um, there you have it. I'm put a little bit of glue on it, and there you go. So this would be cute in so many different colors, so many different occasions. It would be cute with a little Easter decoration. So, all right, that was project three and you get a couple of those in the kit. And now we'll go to the final one. All right, I like to share the sizes and there's a lot going on here. So um, how it works is if you get my kit, I cut everything for you. That's the first thing to know. If you get my kit, I also do the PDF for you. Um, and it has all the dimensions in it. But um, we, don't have, uh, we don't have any of that sitting in front of us right now. So I'm just going to go over. This is what I meant by I took a window strip. And then I just kind of like placed all the um, elements on it. So I may just do that for the whole kit. I don't know yet. I'm still kind of figuring out the best way to package. I just learned that. But um, of course, you're going to get your two pieces where you can decorate your envelope and you can um, pick either side. So that's great. And then there's a lot of little pieces here, you guys, but it's super cute. So, and I want to show you the bookmark and how we do that. So, hopefully I got that right. All right. So you're going to have your Calypso Coral and it's eight and a half by five and a half, but then you're going to cut a little bit of it off. 
So it's eight and a half by five and a half. You score it at four and a quarter, but you're gonna cut about a quarter of an inch off. And let me show you where we're headed, by the way. Where we're headed is we've got a belly band. Thank you for your kindness. That's in the dainty um, stamp set. Thank you for your kindness. We've got a belly band. You open it, and then here we are. The best is yet to come. If you've got one of the old bookmark sets, you might maybe find a little sentiment there. By the way, ignore those little holes. I was going on the path of a different idea and changed my mind, so ignore those holes. But um, you get to take this out, and it becomes a bookmark card. And I'll show you how to make that tiny little corner there. So the reason there's so many layers is because I've really just kind of layered it up. I like that that looks like it's a black lining all the way around. Um, so I'll try to take you pretty quickly through what those sizes are. And we'll get to it. Basically, here's what you need to know. If you're cutting off one and a quarter there, you just need to measure this. Come in quarter of an inch for your basic black layer. Come in quarter of an inch for your designer series paper, and that's that. And then you want to make sure behind it that you're long enough, so it's five and a quarter long, and that um, you know you're not going too far over. So um, you can for sure figure it out. The hard part to this was figuring out what's the right width here, and then what's the right width of the bookmark. So I'll let you know that information. Um, and then this is just a piece of basic white that fits in there. That's for the belly band. Belly bands are always one and a quarter by nine and three quarter. So it's one and a quarter wide, nine and three quarter long. I scored it about three inches in, so I always start that way. And then if it's one and a quarter, then a belly band, belly band strip is gonna be about an inch wide by four inches. So that's that guy. Uh, that's it. I know I'm missing one color, but we'll get to it. So, all right. So this guy is five and a quarter. Um, and then I'll tell you the other size as I do this. So you'll get all of these cut in your kit. Um, it won't, if you're, if you're making one card, it will all fit on one piece of basic black. If you're making two cards, it won't all fit on one piece of basic black. So I'll give you the sizes in a second. I wrote them all down. But basically, it's just a matter of kind of assembling everything. Because um, all the cutting is pretty straightforward. So I was taking out, like I was looking at some of the retired sets. And I'm pretty committed to not bringing retired sets here just because I want to show you guys like what can you do with what you're getting now um, and what kind of new fun stuff is out there but I was thinking that that book set um, could be super cute too um, there was a there was a set that was like a stack of books that came out and that would be really fun to kind of play with this card um, and then put the bookmark in it so um, but we are just going to stick with these pretty flowers. Love Calypso Coral. So that's what we're sticking with. So that's it. Um, we just kind of get everything cut and then we get it all adhered. Now I'll tell you the sizes. I'll tell you the basic blacks. And then you just take the, you take the DSP in a quarter of an inch. But so I already told you the band is going to be one and a quarter by nine and three quarter. And then this guy is going to be two and three quarter by five and a quarter. This is going to be two by five and a quarter. And then your bookmark, and I'll double check, your bookmark is going to be two by four and three quarter. So, yeah, four and three quarter by two. Your bookmark is going to be two by four and three quarter. And then you're going to have another little piece of designer series paper. Just take it in quarter of an inch. So take a screenshot of that if you're not going to get the kit or if you're not going to get the PDF. Those are your basic black layers. I like to, um, sometimes I come in an eighth of an inch with my designer series paper. Sometimes I come in a quarter of an inch. I think this looks fine coming in quarter of an inch this time. And that's my bookmark. 
So let me just show you a couple other, um, let me show you how to put the bookmark corner in place. So you're gonna get one piece of two by two in the kit. And I then take that two by two, I come to my track on my trimmer and I line up the top point and I line up the bottom point and I hold it securely. And I just cut like that. So now I've basically got two corners. And I don't need a full corner. So I'm just going to kind of trim like that. And now I can make a little bookmark corner right there. So I'm going to use my tear and tape again. to get my corner made. I just think this would be so sweet to give to someone like with a book. Um, you could stamp an image on the cover that is kind of reminiscent of a book. Um, just something for them to be, you know, thinking of you or celebrating them or would just be kind of a fun, I, you could give, you know, a, um, a spiritual book with a spiritual saying like I just think it's a nice little touch so I'm going to go ahead and put that in the corner and then the bookmark just fits right in there right so I had there's adhesive there there's adhesive there and then there's enough room for this to come in and come out nicely then the final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my crocodile or hole puncher and I'm going to put a hole punch right there. I'm going to use my ribbon. So I give you bows and I give you ribbon. I'm going to use my ribbon to just kind of put a little, sometimes if it's super thick and I can't get the ribbon through, I'll go ahead and kind of use my take your pick tool to get it in. Um, this piece here is going to be enough for two bookmarks. So you're going to want to make sure you share across your two projects. All I did was put the tiniest little, like I just did a very simple knot and that was it. That's all I did. I didn't do much more. This ribbon, first of all, it's luscious. Second of all, it's super thick. So um, I just kind of left it like that. So that's your bookmark. And then I put the sentiment, gotta clean it, but I put my favorite sentiment, the best is yet to be, but you could put anything. I was taking a look through all our sentiments. We have quite a few that would fit very nicely on there or a little flower, or you could just sign, you know, so that they're thinking of you. But anyway, I'm just gonna kind of put in the middle, I'm just gonna put the best is yet to come. And then I've got a couple gems that go above and below. I'm not gonna put anything over here, but I could. I'm just going to get that on. This is Calypso Coral paired with Petal Pink. And I just love this combination. And then the green is a mossy meadow. And so um, I did decide to bring some of the green into just decorating the bookmark. Um, I like lots of, so this is a new technique. It may not work putting it on these window sheets. All right. I'm glad I'm trying it out. Maybe I'll just keep it on the sheet it came on. Somebody said they did that and they, um, anyway, you get your two gems on here. I'm not going to do it. And I won't, I, I lifted them off of the sheet that came on. I put them on here, but that feels like it's, um, not working out very well. So I won't do that for you guys. But anyway, that's the outside. And now let's do the band. The band I told you is one and a quarter by nine and three quarter. I scored it about three inches. I did not score on both sides. I want to have enough room where I can kind of wrap it nicely. So I'm just going to like loosely like fold it over on the other side again. And I'm going to glue. And I do put the latch in the front because I'm going to cover it up anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And when I do it that way, 
there's plenty of room for the band to go up and down. Of course, the glue hasn't dried all the way yet, so give it time to dry all the way, but you saw that demonstrated. It slides up and down nicely. I'm going to go ahead. You can pick your side. It's so funny. I design it and I'm like, no, no, I want this all to be Calypso. And then somebody comes to class and they're like, oh, I want the purple. So it's really cool to see what you guys do, but pick your side, what side strip you want to have. And Oh, I think Wrigley's here. Wrigley had surgery today. Oh, baby. Little Wrigley's here. Um, I know Wrigley doesn't have a cone on his head, and I think he should. <laughs> Hi, honey, I'm recording. So then we're just going to put thank you for your kindness, and we'll add, I added a gem here, here, and here, and I added the little bow, and that's what we've got. So I'll just pop that on pretty quickly um <laughs> Leila, i missed how much did you cut off the front of the card how many inches so i left um i cut one and a quarter so i left so let me show you with a ruler i cut one and a quarter so really i'll show you the secret to how i did it but um so there's one and a quarter there but really what I did is I took a piece of cardstock and oh, do I have one handy? Let me get one because there's really a good trick if you're going to do this multiple times. Let me just get a piece of cardstock and show you. So cardstock is eight and a half and I know that I want to take off one and a quarter. So eight and a half minus one and a quarter is seven and a quarter. So I'm just gonna cut seven and a quarter. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna score still at four and a quarter. So I don't have my um, scoring tool here, but let me use a bone folder. So I'm gonna cut one and a quarter off. Then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna score right here. Did you guys know you could do that? If you don't have your scoring thing, you could just take a, 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 a bone folder. Um, then I'm going to cut at five and a half. So you just want to cut one and a quarter off. And if you're going to be doing mass production anyway, it's just a little bit easier to do it that way. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, you guys? All right, so... Um, I'm just gonna, you guys can picture the stamping and the putting on of the gems and the little bow. And so let me kind of just bring our little, our little view back here. These are our four cards, uh, with the bookmark, super cute and well, three cards and little treat container. So that's it for today. So, um, just as a reminder, you can, um, you can. You can buy this kit from me for $20 plus shipping. You can place an order with me and you get the, a minimum $35. You get this kit absolutely free. Um, or you can, um, you can buy just the PDF. Um, and if you're on my team, you get the PDF absolutely free. So you can follow along with those instructions. So I'm going to go ahead and stop recording and I'll just come back to you guys and they're so beautiful. I love them. Aww.